Hi everybody, it's Papa Kenny from Papa Kenny's Workshop. Uh, still sorting out the Explorer 8.8 .8 that I plan on narrowing and putting in rattle can the uh, S10 with the LS engine. Um, I actually went to pick and pull. I wanted to get a couple of uh, shock mounts because I don't want to hack up the ones that are on rattle can. I wanted to keep them the way they are. So I went to pick and pull today. Like I said, my, I had four intentions of um, going in, getting the mouse, coming back, and narrowing this. But I lost my phone at pick and pull. Long story short, I ended up going back there. I did find it. Anyways, back to this thing. All right. So as you can see, these are the original shock brackets that came on the Explorer rear end. They're all rotted, rusty rotted, both of them. Well, the other day when I went and to get the short axle, I found brand new brackets on that rear end that I pulled the, the short axle out of. So I took them. All right, now back to the why I went to pick and pull to get new shock mounts. I'll sh show you exactly why. Now, this is exactly how these shocks would be sitting in an Explorer. Okay, back you're sitting at the back of the truck, left side, right side. All right, so what I'm planning on doing is moving these from side to side, switching sides, switching them left to right, and then turning them 180 degrees. Okay, and I'll show you why. Okay, I flip them from side to side and turn them 180 degrees. By doing so, I might get this thing straight. All right, by doing so, it gives me a flush bracket here. So what I did was, here's the S10 bracket. I already cut this one. All right, so this would be under the truck, the shock monster here. You got that? Don't pay attention as I cut this off. Let me show you why. All right, back over to here. All right, so... Back to the Explorer mounts, they got the flush side here. By turning them, they're gonna be like this, and I got a flush side. What I did was, I cut the shock mount off the original shock mount for the S10, and I welded it to that bracket that's there, and I cut the ear off. So, I know that's rather confusing, but um, that's where I'm at. So, um, take the Ford Explorer, shock mount, switch them from left to right, and turn them 180 degrees, so you get the flush side here. Now, this will be into your tire when it's on a truck, so you have to cut it, which is I did there. Then I cut the S10, or blazer, whatever you want, shock mount, off, off the mount, and I welded it to that flush side. This is just tacked on here. So basically, that's how I'm making my shock mounts. Uh, any questions? I know it's very confusing. Leave it in the comment section and I'll answer them, I promise you. I didn't come up with this idea, by the way. I copied this off of somebody else. Um, there's a million different ways of going about it, but this seemed the best way. All right, for, your, for those of you who have not seen the other video and don't plan on watching it, I'll give you a brief explanation of how I got to where I'm at. Here's a Ford Explorer rear end. It's out of a 97 Mountaineer, actually. Same thing as a Ford Explorer. Um, the Chevy, my Chevy, the 2003, from center to center on the spring purchase are 38 and a half inches. On the Ford Explorer, differential from this edge to this edge is 23 and 3 eighths. So you subtract that 38 and a half, you might you subtract 23 and 3 eighths from 38 and a half, Gives you 11 and 16 and a 16th of an inch. So what I did was cut some PVC pipe, push it against there, and I made my mark right here. 11 and 1 and a 16th. That will be, that that line right here will be the center of the spring perch. Over here, same thing, 11 and a 16th to here. Now, the long axle is 21 and a quarter from here to the outside edge. The short axle from here to the outside edge 
That's 18 and 7 sixteenths. So when you subtract the 18 and 7 sixteenths from the 21 and a quarter, you come up with 2 and 7 eighths. That's what I'm cutting out of this axle that I was supposed to do today. So you make a cut here. I'm going to make a cut here. A cut here. That piece is gone. Reweld it to there. Send it on my spring press. Hi everybody. Papa Kenny from Papa Kenny's Workshop. It's cut down day. Um, I'm getting it all laid out again. Actually, my wife's sick inside with COVID. <laughs> Can you believe it? Anyways, I'm, I'm laying this out. I'm sure you going to do. I cut a couple of pieces of PVC, you guys seen that earlier, at 11 and 1 16th of an inch, all right? So, that's, that's going to be the center of the perch, spring perch when I'm done. Cut, and that's where it's going to be welded together. All right, so, I took the 11 and 1 16th minus 2 and 7 eighths, it's like 14 inches. So I cut a piece of PVC, 14 inches long, and I made a mark, and I actually think I'm going to use this as a guide. So, we're going to see how that goes. Um, I'm not going to cut it inside here. I don't want no flyers with sparks flying and everywhere else, and I don't need any distractions. I'm going to bring this thing outside. It's probably like 34 degrees out, but I'm going to be sweating bullets doing it. So, bear with me. Um, like I said, out of all the jobs I've ever done, this one worries to me the most. I don't know why. All right, so let me get all uh, weathered up, and we'll get this thing outside, and we're going to cut it. All right, the first thing, i got to make a mark. I did the marker, but I'm going to do it with a grinder, just so when I put this thing back together, I can clock it right. All right, so I'm going to back up the camera a little bit, because I don't want the sparks to wreck the lens. So, let's see if I can get you in on there. All right. That, that cell, these line up with the other side. All right. Let's get set up for the first cut. Here's my line. I'm actually going to rub that with a marker again. Okay, everybody, we're all set up. I got my piece of PVC I'm gonna try and use for a guide. I don't know how that's gonna work out. It's about 3.30 over here in the Northeast. And just for the record, let me show you guys something. Cause I don't wanna burn down my garage inside. Check it out, 35 degrees. So, yep. I could have cut it in there, but I, I don't want to worry about fires and getting distracted. All right. I guess, here we go. I don't know, should I go all the way through? I was gonna rotate it, but... Okay, I gotta turn it a little bit. 
This is the tricky part because I gotta keep it jacked. Keep it in one spot. Clamp's kind of getting in my way. Freaking clean. Halfway there, I think. Nick it a little bit.
Oh, uh, look at this. I gotta go up a little bit more. I think I can get it. There's one more cut. Let me get reorganized here. Alright, hi everybody. Guys, gals, whoever's watching. I get the rear end in here in the garage where I can turn the bullet heater on and close the door. Play around a little bit more. But uh, that's gonna be it on this video. I did take some measurements and we're square, we're there. And um, I'll take credit for the PVC idea. That worked out awesome, folks. Um, if you're gonna try and do one of them, I highly suggest it. Uh, I say I take credit because I haven't seen that one on, on any videos there. But as you can see, I got that red line there. That's so my calipers are gonna clock at the same way. I put the axles in. Measure them from the edge of the tube to the here. Same exact thing on each side. I took a measurement from here outside to outside on both sides and we're there. So I'm gonna take the axles out and I'm gonna take this all apart. I'm gonna bevel the edges and uh, the next video I'll be welding that thing back up and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna set the pinion angle and put on uh, spring purchase. So I appreciate you all watching. Uh, hit that like button and if you know someone's doing a job like this and even if you don't share the video i appreciate it thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one